Welcome to the Property Investor's Handbook with Colleen Sutherland. My name's Rob Verhoeven. and I am the host of the podcast today. How are you, Colleen? I'm well, thank you, Rob. Now, this is brought to us by Sutherland's Property Management, the um, number one property management company on the Gold Coast, servicing all the Gold Coast into New South Wales, that northern area as well. So how did I go with that? Very good. Very good. <laughs> now, today we're talking about the uh, about understanding property management fees because it's a minefield and people don't really understand what, what they're paying for and why they're paying it. Correct. So let's have a look. It is not the same wherever you go, is it? It's not. No. You get what you pay for. So when people are ringing me for to inquire about our property management services, the first thing they ask me is, how much do you charge? Yep. And my response is, you get what you pay for, how much do you want to pay? And um, they'll, then they'll dictate to me what they want to pay, so I'll let you know what I'll do So when the that negotiation price. starts. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair they enough. They don't want to know what you do, how much you increase their asset. There is some that just want the bottom line, how much does it cost? And there's property managers for those people. There is, So, yes. But when we're talking about someone like yourselves at, at, at Sutherland's Property Management, um, what do they get for their money? What what are the different fees and what, what is entailed in those fees? So what I would encourage a landlord to do is how much they value their asset. So you've yep. just spent $500,000. Sounds good. Right? The last thing you want to do is cut the fee. So when there is a schedule of fees, it's understanding what that property manager will do for those fees. And like you said, there's quite a variety but the standard fees are the monthly commission. You'll get a letting fee. You'll get um, a communication and technology fee. And those are the main ones when you right. first start. So we'll talk about all these three today. We will. Excellent. So let's start with monthly fees. What does that entail? So the monthly fee will cover things that are under the legislation and the must-dos. Yep. So there is quite a level of... Um, tasks that we do on the daily, weekly, monthly for each property. And um, that's what we call a, ma a management fee or a, com yep. a commission that we charge. So that's charge. the main thing that people... It is. They, they focus on that, don't they? Yeah. So that covers um, rent and rent control. Uh, it covers maintenance and the supervision of the maintenance and the, the paying of all those bills. It covers inspections. So you'll get two inspections a year. Um, sometimes three, and um, then we come back, we write up reports, we send it off, um, that sort of thing. It will cover disputes within the tenancy um, and, and the property, um, and it will cover the liaising with between the landlord, the tenant, and the property manager. And so the communication is, is very much the key in, in managing properties. So that's normally a percentage of the... It is, yep. and and anything under say seven and a half percent, either the property manager needs to uh, cut some corners there, or you're not wanting the full suite of of services under that fee. I'm going to ask you about a few things that you mentioned there. Rent control is that like with arrears and things like that? Is that what you're talking yes. about there? Yes. Yes. So we make on a daily basis we monitor rent and rent arrears. So once you fall into arrears, we watch each day that you don't pay. Yep. And then there is a process between each day to each week and then... Uh, over the time. Over the time to, to until sure. they're back in, in advance. Yep. And then the other thing was that with the maintenance control, I think that's the word you yes. used. And that is a similar kind of thing, it's just making sure the maintenance is up to the standard that is going to protect that asset. Yes. So there is the general maintenance that the tenant reports that needs yep. to be um, attended to in a timely manner. But there's also from the inspection when we go out, we, we don't just... Of course. Yeah, so yeah. we don't just look at the dishes are done and, and the med bed's made. We look under sinks, we look at gutters, we look at doors and handles and um, even down to, oh, that door uh, stop has snapped yep. and the handle's hitting the wall and it's about to go through the wall. So... Um, working proactively in maintenance is um, is well, also vital. Because that saves you big yes. maintenance bills down the track. Yeah, so you oh. either fix a doorstop for, you know, whatever co that costs, yep. next to nothing, or fix a hole in the wall. Which is yeah. expensive. So 
It is, yeah, because there's plastering, painting. Um, but with that, uh, the uh, the preventative action of fixing a $30 doorstop to a $200 wall repair makes that's a right. lot of sense. That's um, it's like getting your car serviced. It is, it's yes. It's exactly the same. Yes. I like that. You, <laughs> can, you can use that analogy anytime you like. I will. So the second one? So the next one is a letting fee or a leasing fee. Yep. So that covers the cost of attending the property, um, doing a due diligence on the tenant and advertising and getting it up to scratch. But most importantly, it includes a entry condition report or an ingoing report that details the condition of the property, the condition of the carpets, the walls, how clean it is, all that sort of thing so that when you begin with the end in mind, so yep. doing your entry condition report or your ingoing report, they could be there 12 months and you'll have a vague recollection but I've got it written down here and I've got some photos. They could be there then five years plus and that's when you're like, hmm, was that there? Yep. So, you know, we can look and make sure that, no, it was clean when you moved in. And I guess with the letting fee, I mean, it's really important that um, as a property manager that the property manager is going through the correct procedures to ensure that your tenant is the kind of person that they want in the place. Yes, that's your due, due diligence. So we have to prove who they are, that they can afford the property and that they can look after the property. There's going to be some variables to that where they're just moving out of home or it's, a, you know, I've just sold my house or something like that. But they're the three main points that we look at. Sounds simple, but there is a lot of research in the background that we do to make sure that that is a right, that person is a right fit for that property. Wow. It's a lot to it. I mean, it there it, is, yeah. You see a couple of fees and you think, oh, yeah, what do they do for that? But it, um, you're explaining that really well. The other one is one that I haven't seen before. It's the communication and technology fee. Is that, some, is that something that used to be called something else? It used to be called a postage and handling fee. Some places still call it an administration fee yep. or a statement fee. Ah, okay. um, and because we're not posting letters out and licking stamps and running around to the bank. That's right. It involves um, it, it just a small contribution towards all the software, bank fees and all that other stuff that you might not see yep. um, that will that runs the successfully runs your um, property. And I guess from that part of it that would be a smaller fee than the other the other yes, stuff that we've spoken yeah. about. It's just the the last little bit that Cleans everything up. It is. Some people charge $5. I think, why Why would you bother? Because that would cover nothing. Yep. It starts at about $8 and usually goes up to about 12 yep. And if you look at it as in that's what it costs other things other than just the labour component, which is the management fee, yep. um, just a contribution towards bank fees and that sort of thing. Makes sense. Now, is that the only kind of fees that, they'll, that a, a property investor will incur over time? No, there's um, what we call ancillary fees. So they're fees that are not necessarily covered by the, the property manager uh, property management fee. Yep. Um, one of them is a lease renewal fee. Yep. So people say, oh, but the same tenant is, is still in the property. Why are you charging for a lease renewal fee? Yep. We still do a rent appraisal. Yep. So to make sure that the property is receiving maximum or close there to to ensure that the property is it's keeps up with the market. Yeah, yeah, sure. But the other thing is um, to have the same tenant uh, stay there minimises any downtime. So whether the, the tenant moves out and then you've got vacancy periods, you've got clean-up periods or, or yep. renovation times and things like that. So... Yeah, so we still do all those things. We still need to lodge a, a bond and, um, yeah, it just maintains the, the continuity of keeping the same tenant. But there's other things too that would come up, would pop up from time to time and like if extra inspections are needed, the the tenants, oh sorry, the landlord's going to have to expect that they're going to have to pay some kind of fee for that kind of stuff. Yeah, so you mentioned the inspection fee. So with your management fee, usually to... Uh, inspections are included per year. They're routine inspections. You've still got your entry and your exit, or your ingoing and your outgoing inspections. They're different, yep. but it includes a routine inspection twice a year. If you're wanting that extra inspection, 
So say you want to have three or four per annum and that's within your rights to do so. There may be a fee attached to that because that's an added service. There's extra time. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, you've got to pay for what you get. Is there anything else that people need to keep in the back of their mind that might crop up from time to time? If you've got a uh, furnished property, yep. you may be charged a inventory fee and that's where we go through and count all the knives and forks and pillows and that sort of thing to make a list of what is in the unit and the condition that they're in. I'm guessing that's not your favourite job when you have to Uh, do that. No. (laughs) Uh, Funny, a lot of people now who have a furnished property uh, go to Airbnb. Yep. So not necessarily. Which is um, a different beast altogether, isn't it? It is. Yep. That's We're not another. Talk about that. No, that's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is another suite of service that um, is a different set of fee structure, and that will be for insurance claims. And in, uh-huh. let me tell you, insurance claims are huge. Yep. But because we've got the continuity of the tenancy, we've got all those documents. All the information that's yeah, needed. Yeah. Then we're able to effectively shoot off a, an application for an insurance claim and then knowing exactly what the insurance people need, we've got it all there, prevents delays and, and that sort of thing. Again, so gets, there is gets a resolution it does. as quick as possible yeah, yeah. time. But it, it's huge. So they need photos and videos and all that sort of thing. So there's a fee attached to that. Um, the other one is a tribunal fee. So that doesn't come under general... Um, management yep. because it doesn't happen every day. No, thank goodness. Thank, yes, but when we apply to um, tribunal to uh, for just say it's above the bond and we're claiming rent and we've got a dispute over the cleanliness or something yep. like that, there is an application and again it's like the insurance but probably on a bigger scale of what the tribunal needs to see to so that during your hearing in tribunal that they can determine whether you're on the right side or the tenant's on the right side. So, yep. And that's quite big. And then there'll be an attendance fee as well. I think what's important to remember, though, is that a lot of these fees, they are out of the box. You know, They don't, they they don't come along all the time. But when someone's going in to invest in property, they have to be aware that these things might pop up because doing it on your own is a recipe for disaster. Yes, yeah. So like I've just explained with the ins- even just insurance, but oh. tribunal, there's such major jobs that when you get to tribunal, you want to have all your ducks in a row yep. to maximise um, a positive outcome. So I guess for the people that are listening to this podcast, it's about choosing the right property manager that, that fits their profile of risks that they want to take. I mean, you can get a cheaper property manager, you're going to get a service which will only be up to a certain standard. Yes, yeah. So if you've got a, a, a good... Uh, monthly fee, which you might think might be expensive. However, that mitigates any risk. Yep. So to me, education is the most cost-effective form of risk mitigation. Yep. So we You've educate heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> so we educate the clients and we let them know what we do for our monthly commission, as well as if you need these other services um, attended to, which why not? Because we're there and we know exactly what needs to be done. Um, it's more cost effective for you to pay a, prop, a good quality property manager to do these things for you than to fumble your way through and do it yourself. Like rightly so, you probably can do it yourself, but it's there is a lot more involved. So I think of the time implication of what you'd have to do. Yes. Colleen, you've been in the industry for over 30 years. You've run Sutherland's property management for 19 years now. Um, and I think that shows that you guys definitely have the experience to be able to help people with this kind of stuff. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, thank you again. Sutherland's property management has brought this podcast to life today. And um, Sutherland's property management can be contacted how? Uh, going to the Google and searching Sutherland's property management or spmg.com.au. And there's a lot of information there. There is a huge amount of information. Sutherland Property Management does look after properties from as far south as Casuarina up to that Brisbane corridor um, from the Gold Coast. So there is definitely a great service that you can be um, using for yourselves at Sutherland Property Management. Colleen, thank you again. We're going to sit down and do another couple of these soon. And um, I hope that um, you have a great day. Thanks, Rob. You too. Bye-bye.